Alrighty, everybody, in this video, we're going to be looking at um, real numbers, algebra, that sort of stuff. Uh, we'll talk about all of our exponent laws in this unit. Um, but before we do that, we've got to talk about prime numbers, uh, prime factorization, uh, something called the GCF or a greatest common factor, which you might have heard about already, uh, and a least common multiple or a lowest common multiple. Um, and we'll talk about how to find those two things as well. Now, uh, there's a couple definitions down below, but before we get into that, just uh, make sure that you know in the description down below, uh, you're going to see two links, one that will have a blank copy of this uh, video that I'm about to go through with this same notes file, so you can follow along if you like. Um, the other one will have the full filled out solutions key if you just want to look at that and follow along. Um, so those three definitions then, your prime factor, so when a number has exactly two divisors, one in itself. So an example uh, would just be uh, would be three. Three is an example of a prime factor or a prime number. The only divisor of three are three and one. Okay, prime factorization then is taking, it's a process where we're gonna write a number broken down to its smallest pieces. So the product of all of those prime numbers. So any number can be broken down into a product of primes. Uh, and that's what we're gonna look at in this lesson. Okay, a composite number then is, a, is gonna be a natural number that are greater than one, and are not prime. So if a number isn't prime, we would say it's a composite number. Those are our two types. Okay, there's a couple of uh, divisibility rules, um, which you would have learned before. I think number seven is a little obscure, um, so maybe not. But for any number like two, like any number that's even can be divided by two. You can cut it into evenly two groups, okay? Uh, if it's three, uh, the a number is divisible by three if the sum of the digits adds up to a multiple of three. And you've got an example on, uh, on the other side. So I won't waste our time here. You can read through those rules. Um, and we can always use our calculators to double check if something is divisible by any given number. Okay, uh, five is your divisibility rule for five. Uh, a number is divisible by five if it ends in five or zero. And seven is the weird one. So uh, a number is divisible by seven if you take the last digit of the number, double it, then subtract the doubled number from the remaining number, and that results in a number divisible by seven. It is a really weird one. It doesn't show up too often um, if you're trying to find it. And again, just take the number you think can be divided by seven, divide it by seven. If you get a whole number, great, it's divisible. Uh, if you get a decimal or anything else, you know it's obviously not divisible by seven, okay? So that uh, you can take a read through those and they might help you uh, come up with a, a factor or something right off the bat. Um, so a division table can help us break down these large numbers into all of its prime factors. The other way you might see it and the way that I actually like to do it, um, I like using what's called a factor tree. Okay, this will help us break something down into prime factors. We'll use something similar to a division table later on. We talk about the lowest common multiple, uh, but we'll do, talk, talk about that in a couple minutes. Okay, we can then rewrite the numbers as multiplication statements of those prime numbers. Now this process is called prime factorization. Prime factorization. So this is the process of taking a number and breaking it down into its smallest, smallest pieces. Think of taking like a compound and breaking it down into its elements, like table salt, sodium chloride. You can write it as sodium and chlorine. Okay, this is exactly what we're gonna do here, break a number down into its smallest pieces. So we're gonna prime factorize 3,300. We're gonna break that number down into its parts. So we're gonna start by obviously having our, our compound, our 3,300. Now we're gonna start factoring it. Now, if you're writing a number as factors, we need two things that multiply together to give us 3,300. Now I know it's even, so I could start out by saying two is one of those factors, and then whatever is remaining, whatever I multiply by two to get 3,300. Okay, that isn't the only choice. I could actually also do any other method I wish, as long as those two factors multiply to give me that parent uh, item of 3,300. So 33 multiplied by 100 gives me that 3,300. Now this is a little bit nicer to work with rather than two and the other number because two won't be able to be broken down any further. It's a prime number. And the other number will be quite large. So I have to think a little bit harder on how to break it down further. So for 33 and 100, I know I can break down 33 as the product of three and 11. You know, I can't break those down any further. Those are prime numbers. And once I get to the end of a branch, 
I like to circle them in a different color or circle them with your pencil or pen, whatever it is you're using. That way it really lets you know that they are prime numbers and that is the end of that strand of the tree, the branch, if you will. Now for 100, you could keep that going however you wish. 50 multiplied with two, 25 multiplied with four. You could also do 10 and 10. But it doesn't end here because 10 can be broken down further into five and two. Now, the ends of those ones, five is prime, two is prime, and we're the same logic. This is as far as my tree goes. So everything circled in red is one of my prime factors of 3,300. I do have some that repeat, which is totally fine. So now we can say, therefore, the number 3,300 is actually equal to all of the ends of those branches multiplied together. So everything we circled in red, my prime numbers, those are the prime factors. So if I multiplied all those red circles together, I would get my starting number of 3,300. So I like to write them in decreasing order. So 11 first, then we have two products, or two factors of five. We've got one factor of three and two factors of two. So here is my multiplication statement, my product of primes, and those are gonna be our prime factors. So the prime factors, are 11, 5, 3, and 2. Now I do have some that repeat, which is reflected in this multiplication statement up above. Now we can do the exact same thing um, for the other example here. We can do the same thing for B. So if you wanna try this one on your own, uh, pause the video and go ahead and give it a shot. Um, I'm gonna start going through the answer. So uh, if you do wanna try it, make sure you just give it a pause here, try it on your own, and then hit play, and you'll see how you did. So. We'll start out with that 2646 number. And again, try to break it down into two different parts. So I know it's even, I could use two. Um, you might be able to try three, four, whatever numbers you want. Um, I actually tried to use seven here. And you'll notice that 378 is gonna be the other factor that makes that possible. Now seven is prime, so we're gonna circle it. Make sure we know we're at the end of that strand. Now 378 is even can also be further divided however you choose to. I again chose to try seven and it did work. So seven multiplied with 54 gave me 378. Now again, seven's prime, so we'll circle it. 54, you can split it however you wish, 27 and two, nine and six, uh, whatever combination you like. Um, I'm actually gonna use nine and six. Nine can be split into its two factors of three. Three are, is a prime number, so I know I'm at the end there. Six can be split up into products three, two. Okay, now that one is complete as well. So we've gotten all the way down as far as we can go with each of the branches of this factor tree. So now I can write out my multiplication statement. So therefore, so this little triangle symbol kind of looks like a triforce. Those three little circles just stands for therefore. It's just mathematical symbol we get kind of lazy when we write things out and we like symbols wherever possible so 2646 equals our multiplication statement take all of those prime factors and write them out so seven times seven there's three threes and a two now some of you might already know this but you could actually use exponents here like you learned in junior high so i could write this a little differently and I could do seven squared because I have two of those sevens. Since they're being multiplied together, that exponent of two, that's technically what we call something being squared, um, I could do this here. Now, if I've got three of them, that's my exponent of three. If I were to have four or five, my exponent would reflect the number that I'm multiplying together. So it's not three because I have a three here, it's three because there's three threes being multiplied together. Okay, the last one there is a two, and it doesn't have an exponent since there's only one two. We assume that there is an imaginary exponent of one there. Okay, so I could write it out like that if I wish. Okay, and then you could state if you really wanted to that the prime factors are seven, three, and two. Okay, so we've broken them down, those large numbers, into their base components, right? The smallest numbers possible. Okay, so that's prime factorization.
Uh, we're also going to talk about a greatest common factor. So what happens now when I'm given two numbers and I want to figure out what they have in common and I want that common thing to be the largest. So now I've got two. So in order to do this, I, the, I really need to know what their component pieces are. I need to know what makes up both of those numbers to figure out what they have in common. Now, we're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to make two factor trees and see how these numbers are built. If I know what they come from, I can figure out what they have in common. So 138 is what we'll start with. Okay. You can choose to split it up however you want. If it's an even number, starting with two is not a bad choice. It just basically cuts off one of your branches really, really short. Because if that first number is a two, two is prime, can't be broken any further. So one side of my tree is just going to get really long. So I'm going to choose not to use two, and I'm going to use six. Okay, six and 23. Those are two factors. I multiply them together, I get 138. Okay, six gets split into three and two. Now 23 um, doesn't get split any further. Okay, 23 is actually a prime number. So my three prime number factors here, three, two, and 23. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing uh, for 198. I'm actually gonna write a 138 first, sorry. So 138 is gonna be the product 23, multiplied with three, multiplied with two, just like we did before, the product of primes. Now for 198, um, split it how you like. Here, let's just assume we don't know what other number to use, and the only one we can think of is two, because I know it works. Okay, so we'll do two and 99. Now two's prime, so I'm gonna end up circling that, so 99 is where we have to go next. And that's gonna be uh, 33 multiplied with three. Okay, that'll give us 99. Now three's prime, so now I'm working on the 33. So 11 and three. As soon as I get to that point, two is prime, 11 is prime, three is prime, three is prime. I've, I've done it. I've broken this down into a product of primes. I just have to write out my statement to reflect that. So 198 is equal to 11 multiplied with three, two times, uh, and then a two. Now that I've written out that product of prime statement, we need to see what's in common for both of these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for any prime factors that are the same for both numbers, and then we're gonna circle them. So if I look at the 138 statement, there's a factor of 23. I don't see that in the other one. So I can't say that that's common because it's not common to both. 138's got a factor of three, there's a prime. 198, I also have a three. So wherever you see a number in uh, one of your multiplication statements, try to match it up with another one. Now, I know there are two prime factors of three in 198, so I can't circle both. It's a one for one. So if I circle one three, I can only take one three from the other one. Okay, in 138, I see a prime factor of two, which means I'm looking for a two as a factor in 198, which I have. Now, the things that I've circled, they're the same for both. Now remember that these are multiplication statements. So I can actually rewrite them as being 23 multiplied with three times two, which is six. I can actually put those together. Okay, now for 198, we'll do the same thing. So I've got an 11 multiplied with a three. That's also being multiplied with that factor of six. Okay, so I'm not looking for anything else only the things that are common to both. Both of those numbers have a common factor of six. Six is the largest common factor that I'm going to have. That means it is the greatest common factor. So therefore, the GCF of 138 and 198 is six. Now, if you did that differently, totally fine. This is just one method to do this. And we're just using that factor tree, that prime factorization idea that we introduced before. So I'm going to do B as well. And if you want to try it on your own, just like before, just pause it here, try it out, and then hit play on the video. Okay, so determine the greatest common factor of 126 and 144. So I'll start out the same way. Let's keep it consistent. So 126. And we'll start. So we'll do, let's keep it with 2 here. That's a 63. 
This will be nine and seven. That'll be three and three, and we're done. There's all my primes. Two, three, three, seven. We'll do the same thing for 144, and then we'll write out our statements. So that's gonna be 12 and 12. That's a perfect square. So four, three, four, three, two, 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 two. So there you go. Um, and we're gonna have a bunch of twos, four of them, and three. Those are the ends of our factor tree. It's kind of right. So let's do 126 first. Actually, I'm going to write them up on the right. A little bit of room. So 126 is equal to 7 times 3 times 3 times 2. And 144 equals 3 times 4 factors of 2. Okay, so there's our product of prime statements. Now we're going to look for the common things. So I don't see sevens common. I've got some threes, so I'll take a three from each of them. It looks like I can only match up one. And then a two and a two. And I'm missing a three right there. Okay, so let me move this. This is for 144. I actually missed one of the factors of three. That's my bad. Let's fix that up. Three there. And make sure I put in another multiply. And I can do this now. There we go. That looks a bit better. Yeah. Okay. So let's rewrite both of those statements to reflect that new common factor. So um, everything I circled should be two threes and a two. Two threes and a two. Nothing else matches. So we're going to be doing three times three, which is nine, times two, which is 18. So that 18 is going to become our common factor. And we're going to be multiplying by whatever's left. So 18 by 7. And 2 times 2 times 2, you can say that's 8. Okay, so the red is actually my common factor. So here, so therefore, the GCF of 1, 2, 6 and 1, 4, 4 is 18. Okay, so we took as much as we could from both. That, that will be our common factor. Whatever's left is just the remaining other factor. So that basically comes from your tree as well. So for 126, you can see that if the only thing I had left was seven, that's one of my primes on my tree that didn't match the other tree, okay? So I had an eight, which means I had three twos. So two times two, which is four, multiplied with one of those other twos, that gave me the eight. Okay, we can do the same thing. Maybe we have three numbers. So again, if you really want to challenge, pause it here uh, and you, you can try that out. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rip through this one pretty quick um, just because I want to do the lowest common multiple stuff in here too. And I don't want this video to get super, super long. So here's 150, we'll do 75 and two, and then we'll make that 25 and three, and then that's five and five. So there's your tree for 150. No matter how you start, you'll end up with the same prime factor. So your tree might look a bit different, but the end result will be the same. Okay, so we'll do 25 and 11, and there's five and five. All right, and then 425 is the last one. So we'll do 25 and 17. I think you can kind of see it already. I've got a 25, a 25, a 25. It looks okay. Uh, we'll go through the whole process just to double check, and there's another five and five. So it's helpful to see it written out for sure. Five, five, 17, five, five, 11, and then five, five, three, two. So really, if you look at these trees, five, 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 five. 17 is prime, 11 is prime, three is prime, two is prime. None of those have things in common. Really, it's my 25 that's my greatest common factor here. So without even writing that product of prime statement, you can say, therefore, uh, that's a terrible way to write the, the GCF is 25. Okay, the more you practice these and the more that you try, the easier and faster uh, they become because you're getting so used to them. So there you go. It's 25 for that one. So that takes care of greatest common factor. Um, in our next unit of, of math, when we talk about polynomials, um, we'll start to talk about greatest common factor, not just of numbers, but of expressions. So we're going to deal with variables and all that stuff. So this skill uh, will come back for sure. Um, so please, please keep that in mind.
Okay. Okay, so prime factorization can also be used to find the lowest common multiple between two or more numbers. The lowest common multiple is the smallest whole number that two or more numbers can divide into. So if you had a number or a pair of numbers like two and let's say six, for example, two and six. So example, two and six. You're looking for uh, multiples of them that they both share. So if I just started to count two, four, six, I need multiples, so that's not the right number. Two, four, then eight, 12. Oh, I did this backwards. Two, four, I'm just going to add two. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, basically any multiple of two. Right now, if I try to do that with multiples of six, so six, 12, 18, uh, 24, 30, and you could keep the pattern going just by taking the multiples of each of those numbers. You're really just trying to find the first time that they match up, right? So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, and I'm not gonna do the starting number. So if I look, and then I can circle them. That's a common multiple, right? If I actually looked at six also, that would be the smallest common multiple. I wouldn't even have to do any multiples of six. Two would basically be there. Right? I'm looking for the ones that are the same in both. But what happens if the numbers aren't so nice? Or what happens if I even have three numbers? Okay. There's a bunch of different ways that you could look at this. Now, using that factor tree is absolutely one of them. So we'll do that method here, and then I'll show you a different method for B. So we're going to use the prime factor method like we used before for greatest common multiple. And it starts out the same. So you're going to do 18, 20, 30, and this is where you're going to build those trees. So exactly like we did before them. Now the numbers are small, which is nice. So we'll do 9 and 2. This will be 3 and 3. For 20, 10 and 2, we'll do 5 and 2. And then for 30, let's do 5 and 6. And then there's three and two. Now, we just need to write them as product of primes first. So for 18, that's going to be three times. Actually, I'm going to use the exponent form here because we haven't really done too much of that. So instead of writing it as three times three, I'm going to write it as three squared. Okay, And then multiplied by two. For 20, that's going to be five to the power of one multiplied by two squared because there's two twos. So 2 times 2 is 2 squared. For 30, that's going to be equal to 5 times 3 times 2. Now, the way that finding the least common multiple works, if I do it this method, we're going to look at all of the prime factors in that product of prime statement, and we need to pick the largest ones that occur in all three. Okay, so... This is a weird method to think about. So we're gonna work our way up. So my first prime factor that I see is two. That's my smallest. We're gonna go from smallest to biggest. So if I look at my prime factors of two, so in 18, there's one, two. In 20, there's two, because I know it should really be two times two. And in 30, there's one, two. Now we're gonna choose the one that has the most. So our 20 has the most number of twos. There are two of them. So we're going to start by looking for that to build our lowest common multiple. So for our factor, our prime factor of two, we're choosing the one that has the highest power, the biggest amount of them. So we're going to build that into our lowest common multiple, two squared. Now the next prime factor we see is three. Now I know there's no three in 20, but I do have threes in the other one, so I have to use that there as well. We're basically building the number that all of these could possibly add to. So I see in our, in our number of 30, there's a prime factor of three, but in 18, there's two threes. So I need to make sure I choose the largest power of three, so three squared. Okay, the next prime factor we have to deal with is five. So 18 doesn't have a five, so I don't have to think about that one, but the other two do. Now they both share, they both have one uh, prime factor of five, so I just need to multiply it by one five. 
Now, by doing that multiplication statement in red here, that will give me the lowest common multiple or least common multiple, whatever they'll add up to. Okay, so if you think about that process we did up here, uh, we'll actually decide if it's the 6 or the 12 because I know 6 is the first number. So we'll take a look at that one after I multiply this out for us. And we'll decide whether or not it should be 6 or it should be 12. Okay, so 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and then the 5. So that least common multiple when you multiply those is 180 as our LCM. So if you kept the pattern going with these three numbers, 18, 20, 30, and started adding up multiples of them, you'll see that you get to 180 as well. So try it out, uh, but you will get there. Now let's go back to this example that we started with. Let's figure out if it should be the six, because it's weird that it's the starting number, or it should actually be the 12. So let's take two, break it down any further if possible, and I can't, the prime factor of two is two, two is a prime number. So for six, I can break this into three and two, okay? So my prime factor of two is two. My prime factors of six are three and two. So for my lowest common multiple, I'm looking for the highest power of each prime factor in both numbers. So we'll start with the three. So there's one three that exists in six, so my lowest common multiple gets a three. For the twos, there's prime factor of two in my number of two and a prime factor of two in my six. So there we go. Our least common multiple here is gonna be six. So it's gotta be the first one. Even though 12 is still a common multiple, it's not the least common multiple. It's not the smallest one. And okay, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, if you wanna try B on your own, go for it. Pause it here, same like before. Uh, we'll get that one done for you as well, but I'm gonna show you a different method to do this. Now, it doesn't involve using the factor tree. This actually uses uh, a little bit of division, and I actually like this method a lot more. Okay, so we'll start out by making a little chart. I think that's enough. Okay, so we're gonna place our numbers in the top, 28, 42, 63, and we're gonna have a list of primes on the outside. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna pick some prime numbers, but we're gonna pick them very deliberately because they have to be factors of one of my three numbers. It doesn't have to be a factor of all three, at least one of them. And we're gonna start out by just getting all those primes out of the way. So if I look, I've got a couple of even numbers and I know that two is a prime number, so let's start there. So I'm gonna start out by saying two is one of my prime numbers. Now if it is, I'm gonna to try to divide all of the three numbers by that two. Now, if it can't be divided by two because it's odd, you're just not going to divide it. You're going to leave it alone. Okay, that means two won't be a factor of that odd number. Okay, which makes sense. It's it's an odd number. So um, we're going to divide 28 by two to give us 14, 42 by two to give us 21, and the 63 cannot be divided by two. So we're going to leave it alone. That takes care of one of them. So I know that I'm going to have to account for at least one prime factor of two in our lowest common multiple. And we're going to keep going and keep going until we get ones on the bottom, until we're done. So I don't see any more even numbers. So I know two won't work again. Uh, three has potential to work, but I know for sure that seven will work. Okay, it'll work with these two because seven is a prime number and it's also a factor of 14. 21 and 63, so that's actually a really good choice. So seven's prime, 14 divided by seven is two. I'm gonna get a three there. 63 divided by seven uh, is gonna give us nine. Okay, so that's a good choice. And I really just messed up this table because now I'm mixing colors, but that's okay. Now I can see that two is gonna work again. And that's gonna give me my first one. So let's do a two. That'll be a one here. Three doesn't get divided by two, neither does nine. Okay. I don't really want to use one. One's not necessarily a prime number because if the only factors are one and itself, both of those things happen to be one, which doesn't really make sense. So one's not actually a prime number. So as soon as I get to a one, I know I'm done. So let's go for three next. Three's prime. So three, there's a one, three divided by three, that's one, nine divided by three is three. So one more prime to take care of, there's one extra prime factor of three hidden in here. So there's a three again, 
one, one, one. So now I've gotten to the end. Now here's the list of primes that are gonna make up my lowest common multiple. This is actually really nice. I don't have to build a factor tree. So therefore, my lowest common multiple is gonna be the product of primes. Product of primes. Okay, so you're gonna say that, now you can put them in order I could have actually done another factor of two first, uh, but I'm going to rearrange them and put them in biggest uh, biggest first, smallest. So seven, two threes, two twos. So seven times three times three times two times two. So my lowest common multiple here, if you multiply all that out, is 252. Okay, so we don't really want to keep adding up 28, 42, 63, and row by row by row to see when they match up. That's a lot of work. This algorithm is actually really, really nice, and it gets you those primes right away. All you have to do at the end is multiply them together. Okay, so there's your lowest common multiple. Okay, we'll do the other one underneath as well. We got a couple little uh, applications, word problem type questions, and uh, then we can wrap this video up. So primes, 15, 32, and 44. So here's how we start our division algorithm, and away we go. Just figure out some primes. So uh, let's do three. Yeah, let's do three. Uh, now I'm going to start with five, actually, because five is factored 15. Five. So that'll be a three. That's 32. That's 44 still. Now let's do let's do a three. Finish that one out. So one. 32 and 44, those don't have a factor of three in them. So let's go with twos next. So 16, that's 22. And we can do another two. Okay, so that's a one, that's an eight, and that's an 11. One more two, I guess. And there's a four, that's still 11. And there's another two hidden in there. So there's a one, there's a two, there's an 11. There's even another two hidden in there. One more. And the last one is an 11. So this one actually had a lot of prime factors that I had to account for. So one, 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 now we're done. Okay, so I've got a five, a three, one, two, three, four, five twos, uh, and an 11. So this means my lowest common multiple, the more primes I have, the bigger my lowest common multiple is going to be. Now, this one would be really, really challenging to just do 15, then 30, 45, 60, 70. I keep adding all the way till you found something that matched because the numbers are so different. Okay, so therefore, my lowest common multiple is going to be the product of all of those primes. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to move this all the way over. So 11 times 5 times 3 times two, times two, times two, times two, times two. Should be five twos, one, two, three, four, five, and there is. So my lowest common multiple, when you multiply all that out, you would have had to add up all those numbers far enough to see that 5,280 is when they're actually all gonna meet, which is a lot of work to do by hand. By doing either one of these algorithms, the division algorithm or the factor tree to take the biggest number of primes from each factor, that would also do it. Okay, it'll do it much, much faster than you sitting there and adding with your calculator for forever. Okay, it doesn't really matter which method you use. So if I look underneath now, there's there's two examples here. Now, they they ask you similar questions, but the concept is very different. So for example, for John has two lengths of wood to build steps on a staircase. One length is 72 inches, uh, the other one 90. Okay, he wants to cut both those pieces into strips of equal width that are as wide as possible. He also does not want to waste any material. How wide could he cut the strips? How many would he have? Now there's a key word here that you want to cut them into an equal width. Okay. That's the important word here. They need to be the same size. Now the two sizes you have are 72 and 90. Now, if you want them to be the same or equal, you're looking for the size that's common to both numbers. If you're looking for something that's common, you're looking for uh, the greatest common factor because you don't want to waste anything. So you want to take as much as you possibly can 
to maximize the usage here. So you're looking really, this is greatest common factor question. That's really what you're looking for here. So we got to go find the greatest common factors of these two numbers. So if I do uh, the 72 first, we'll do an eight, a nine, there's a three and a three, here's a four and a two, which means I've got a two and a two, okay? So on the basis of the 90, 10 and nine, that's a three and a three, that's a five and a two. Now I'm gonna circle the things that are common in red, and then we're gonna circle what's not common in another color. So uh, I'm gonna circle the ends. So two, I can see a two on the ends of both. Um, I can see two threes on the ends of both. So my red stuff is gonna be the common stuff. Okay, so common factors. And purple, That'll be our leftovers, okay, the stuff that's not common. So if we write out the 72 first, 72 equals the red stuff that was common to both, my 3 times 3 gives us 9, times 2 gives us 18, so 18. And then on the 72, uh, that was the purple stuff of 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, so that's my leftovers. On the 90, you're gonna again have 18, we said that was common. The leftover stuff uh, is five. Okay, so I know now that if I take that piece that's 72 inches, if I cut them into 18 inch pieces, I'm gonna get four 18 inch pieces. So four times 18 gives me that 72. So I'm really taking that big long board, chunking it up into 18 inch pieces and I get four cuts. Or I get 18 four inch cuts, but I don't really wanna do that. I wanna make them as big as possible. Okay, I don't wanna waste as much and I wanna cut them into the ones that are as wide as possible. So I'm cutting them into 18 inches, four strips. On the 90 inch piece, I get five 18 inch strips. Okay, so if you wanna write that out as like a statement or something, uh, whatever you need to, uh, we can say that we can cut uh, the strips 18 inches wide and get nine strips total. Five from one piece, four from the other. So the five and the four combined from nine strips total, and they are 18 inches each. Okay, so really without explicitly stating it, that was the greatest common factor question. Okay, number five, the last one here. Ben goes to physiotherapy every 12 days and Isabel goes every eight. If Ben and Isabel were both at physiotherapy today, how many days will they be or will it be until they're at the clinic together again? Now, this is really a least common multiple question because if you think about it, if he goes, Ben goes every 12 days, he's there on the, the, right now, today, and then 12 days after, then 24, 36, so on and so on. But Isabel is there 8, 16, 24, and I kind of just said the answer. So but just by kind of adding them out, on the 24th day, that matches up on both patterns. Now we have to show that somehow mathematically how we got it. Uh, so let's go ahead and find the least common multiple. Take your pick of method. You can show that the pattern continues and you can circle 24 on both. You can do the factor tree. You can use that division algorithm, which is the one I'm going to do. So here's my primes, 12, uh, eight. Okay. Um, two's a good choice. So six, and that's a four. Two is another good choice. And that's a three, and that's a two. I have to do another two as a prime. So that stays as three because it can't go into there. This one becomes a one, and there's a three on the end to finish out that algorithm. So my lowest common multiple is going to be the product of those primes, two times two times two times three. So two times two times two times three. Uh, two cubed, so those three twos multiply to give us those eights. Eight times three is 24. Okay, so there you go, lowest common multiple, 24. Okay, so in 24 days, 
they will meet at the clinic again because remember they're currently at the clinic like today so it will take 24 days for them for their those schedules to match up again okay and if you still are having a little bit of issue with that think about it this way so today is the first day day zero okay so for ben you'll go on the 12th 24th and then 36 days after okay so today is day zero so 12 days 24 36 now for isabel that'll be 8 16 24 and so on and so on so the first time that they match up is the 24th day Ben has one visit before that. Isabel has two. She just goes more frequently than he does. So on the 24th day, they'll meet each other there again. Okay, so that takes care of our first lesson. Uh, in our second one, uh, we'll talk about some perfect squares, perfect cubes, square roots, cube roots, all that sort of good stuff. So uh, if you do have some questions, please make, leave a comment. Email me. I think my email is in uh, the About section on the YouTube channel there. Um, and I'll be more than happy to uh, help you out. And just remember, in the links there, uh, you will have access to the blank copy of notes along with the, um, the full-out solution manual. Uh, so I hope that helped, and uh, we'll see you next time.